Eighth grade, time for lesson seven. And today's lesson, Compound Complex Sentence Review. So very, very familiar, something you've done a lot of, but it um, takes just a little effort to find them, but not bad. So let's review, what do we mean by a compound complex sentence? <clears throat> to make a sentence compound, we need two independent clauses. Let's quickly review, what is a clause? Clause, any group of words that has a subject and a predicate or a verb. Now, if it's independent, it can stand by itself as a complete sentence. It makes sense as a complete thought. A dependent clause, on the other hand, is a subject and verb pattern, but if you pulled it out of the sentence, it wouldn't make sense by itself. So when you have um, two independent clauses, you have a compound sentence. If one or more of those independent clauses have a dependent clause within it, then you call it compound complex. So it can have more than one, but at least have at least one. So again, compound complex sentence, at least two complete sentences put together, either with and, but, or, or, or with a semicolon. Somehow they need to be joined. And then one of those sentences needs a dependent clause. Okay, now let's just review the three kinds of dependent clauses that you might find. <clears throat> okay, there are adjective, adverb, and noun. So the adjectives are those clauses that begin with relative pronouns, and the relative pronouns are who, whom, whose, which, and that. So who, whom, whose, which, and that, and they're going to describe a noun or pronoun. That's an adjective clause. An adverb clause begins with a long list of words called subordinate conjunctions. Words like because, and before, and wherefore. Uh, I think wherefore. Anyway, a whole list of them, uh, subordinating conjunctions. And those are adverb clauses. Now they're going to uh, modify mostly verbs, but they can adjectives and other adverbs as well. <clears throat> You don't have to identify which one of these they are today, um, just that they are a dependent clause. Lastly, noun clauses, they can begin with either relative pronouns or subordinate conjunctions, and they do a noun function. So often they're the subject, sometimes direct object. That's probably the two most common. But they can be objects of preposition, they can be positives. Um, I'm missing one. Anyway, um, what is the one I'm missing? Predicate knowledge, yes. Okay, so let's just go jump in here and, and do a couple. So uh, number one, you just need to do the definition, that's easy. And two through, I believe it's eight, you are supposed to bracket <coughs> any dependent clauses. <coughs> Adjective, adverb, or noun clause. Bracket those. Underline any independent clauses. And if you spot a sentence that is Compound complex. Put on the blank C B C X. And I'm just gonna tell you there are four. Four sentences that you need to put in C B C X. Okay, let's do number two. While dad was at the hardware store, mom went to the dollar store, and Julie walked to the library. Okay, so let's look for uh, verb, pardon me, subject verb patterns. Okay, I see dad was. So what do we have there? While dad was at the hardware store. If you pull that out, just say, while dad was at the hardware store. What? No, that doesn't make any sense by itself. So what do you think? Yes, that's a dependent clause. And it happens to be an adverb, I believe. Um, tells when. So you would put brackets around while dad was at the hardware store. Brackets, like this. Okay, then you should underline all the independent clauses. So, mom went to the dollar store. Mom went to the dollar store. That's a sentence. You can say, mom went to the dollar store. That's a sentence all by itself. So, underline it. Yes. And, we've got a joining word, conjunction. Julie walked to the library. Again, a complete sentence. Julie walked to the library. So, underline that as well. So we have two complete sentences being joined together. That's compound. We have bracketed 
a dependent clause, so that makes it complex. Put the two together, and yes, you should put in the blank C, D, C, X. Okay. All right, so then uh, they just show you again how to diagram them. They're so kind, they give you the diagrams, but um, note that to join. some stuff here. So to join the compound sentences, you do, well, you do the dot. And then you either put the semicolon there, or if it's and, but, or, or no, or yet, you would put that there. Okay? They illustrate that very well, so I think you can handle it. You just have one review part I want to touch on, on the transitive and intransitive verbs. Numbers 11 and 12, you're supposed to use a form of the word walk. So you can have walked or yeah, some form of walk. Walked is what I'm thinking of. And one time you should make it intransitive and one time you should make it transitive. And um, so intransitive means an action verb that does not pass its action to something else. Transitive means an action verb that does pass its action to something else. So the first one you need to have walk and like uh, my mom walks slowly. That simply walks and but there's no action being passed. No, she, there's nothing being walked. Okay? Now, um, and then transitive, it needs to pass to something. So you walked something, like your dog. Uh, Johnny walked his dog, you know, or something like that. Okay, so one time in transitive does not pass action. Transitive does pass action. All right, I think that's uh, got you going. Down at the bottom, you have a, an a adjective and adverb underlined in time again. They're giving you a, good, a lot of practice in that, and that's good. 35 adjectives, 5 adverbs. Um, count little and little hills as a noun, not an adjective. So little hills is just, little does not count. So, all right, I think that puts you on your way. Any questions? Oh, you can't ask, can you? Okay, have a good day.